Hey guys, it's Space Sims, and we are back with more Pure Fury 1926. And for anyone keeping tabs, it's been like a month for me. Uh, it's been like two days for you, and it's been like a month for me, so I was like, what the fuck, where the hell were we, what the hell have I done? Um, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be starting Nicholas' route today, because we haven't done that yet, and this motherfucker's been dead in every other route! But, uh, like, seriously? I had to go back to my last thing, and I'm like, okay, that was the end of Yang's route, which I mean, I think that means we're going to Nicholas, but I was waiting for myself to be like, we're gonna do Nicola next! I'm like, and I never, and I was like, whatever talking about too much fucking shit good god why do you deal with me anyway um so yeah uh not that yang's route yang's route i recorded before christmas and then you can see this is now january and it's january as i'm recording this and i'm like, <laughs> I'm like uh, i got like a week until this post so that's how fucking far behind i am but you know again October couldn't record anything for a while. December couldn't record anything for a while. Really fucking behind. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? Anyway, starting Nicola's route today, so let's just fucking click this shit. Start this scenario, Nicola. Yes! And I don't remember the voice we gave Nicola in the last game, because that was... <laughs> I forgot. Oh, Nicholas can't be trusted. じゃあ。君はファミリーがこのまま滅んでもいいんだね。ああ。そうか。夢だったんだ。あんな夢を見るなんてどうかしている。嫌だな。僕の予感は昔から悪いものほどよく当たるのに。Well, that was intense. I fucking forgot. I told you I was gonna fucking forget. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. So I cranked up the volume for that. Oh, God. And in my ears. Holy shit. Um. Oso. Grazioso. Something I can't pronounce. Whatever. Anyway, so there we go. Okay. Volume's back to normal. Uh, yeah, I totally. Partially because it's been like a month since I recorded and partially because I just forget every time because we switch back and forth between games and it's probably because it's been like a month. So I think I've forgotten in every single one that we've done. <laughs> like, and I've been like, I'll just start re-recording and we'll watch it again. And like, nah, whatever. Anyway, Nicola, wake up, Nicola. It's time. Hmm. I don't, and the voice we gave him, I don't remember in the first game, and he's been dead in every single route, so, like, we've never gotten to actually talk like Nicola. But I think he was just kind of sort of normal, because we don't have a lot of voices, and, you know, we decided this time around Yang was getting the fucking shitty Irish accent, or whatever it is. <laughs> anyway. Really, you said you needed to be up early, remember? Right. Nicola, wake! Ugh! Oh, CG right off the bat. Oh, okay, well, it blanked away, but it's there. As I shook him with a bit more force... Yeah, there we go. Oh, hi, I'm here for this. Yeah, okay, I'm liking this. Thanks. Good job, because I love Nicola. He pulled me down on top of him. Why do you have your clothes on already? Because I woke up before you. Well, why weren't you waiting for me in bed last night? He whispered with a helpless longing in my ear as his arms around me grew stronger. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna need to turn the air conditioning on in here, and it's the middle of fucking winter, but if you're gonna get this hot already, Jesus. I couldn't escape his embrace if I wanted to. <laughs> if I wanted to. The point being, I don't. Hi. 
I gave him my excuse in a similar whisper. Nicola, you were out last night for work, remember? Dante said you wouldn't be back until late. Julia told me that I should rest in the guest room for the night. And he's like, and I expected you to be in my bed naked when I got home, bitch. And my answer would normally be a slap in the face, but it's Nicholas, so like, I mean, okay. Naked in bed waiting for you when you get home. <laughs> oh, we're starting this route off right. There you go. You're welcome. Nicola? I was looking forward to coming back to see you waiting for me here. Instead, I returned to a cold and empty bed. I felt so lonely. I kind of believe it, actually. I stammered, not knowing what to say. I'm sorry, I... I just couldn't. It would have made me lonely sleeping in bed without you. You would have lingered in my mind all night. Oh, girl. I saw something glimmer behind his eyes. Oh yeah, right up for close. Good job, CJ. Say, Spacey... Perhaps because he had just woken up, his skin against mine felt warmer than usual. I found myself unable to look away from the jade eyes fixed upon me. His eyes kind of look blue, but that's okay. They met my own with a vulnerability that made my heart race. What is it, Nicola? My bride. Ah! Of course! <laughs> Stop it! We started off with the kind of steamy CG. You know. Close and whatever. And then, like, the whole insinuation that you should have been in my bed when I got home and, like, now we're going to get married. I just love this. He's so going to not die in this route. Obviously, because it's his route. But, like, I my first thought was, like, oh, my God, you're going to die, aren't you? Well, you can't. It's your route. Never mind. Fine. My heart skipped at the unexpected proposal. As flustered as I was, I tried to maintain my composure. I wouldn't be able to. Why are you asking? My attempt to stay calm failed miserably. I could hear my voice shaking as I responded. You know, hold on a sec. Let's skip speed. Let's skip mode, skip speed. One of you guys, uh, like a hundred years ago, posted in the comments, like, I think when you were doing the options, you did the skip speed and not the other thing. And like fast for tech speed, like normal. Um... And I was like, it's possible I'm an idiot. And I just keep forgetting every single time we come into the game. And it's seriously been like six months since you said it. I think it was like the second freaking episode. But like, what's the text? There, my God, there it is. Oh my God, you were right. <gasps> I love you. I can't remember who said it, but like, because I was like, why is it so slow? And I've been complaining about this forever. And someone pointed that out, that, like, I was looking at... I didn't scroll all the way down, because I'm stupid. Um, but again, I keep forgetting, until literally just now in the back of my mind, I was like, God, this fucking... T oh, wait, hey, somebody told me about that! Because, like, I read it, probably, like, during Gil's route, or when I was done with Gil's route, and I was like, oh, I remember that! And then I went to Orlock's route, completely fucking forgot, and I've just completely forgotten since then, so, like, halfway through the game, I got it, don't worry. It's like I read the comment and then like, but I just kept forgetting about it every time. And it would be after I finished a route that all of a sudden I'm like, oh, yeah, that call. I'll remember next time. But just exactly like, Jesus fucking Christ. I'm like the dumbest fucking person on the planet. What the hell? Every single time we start one of these routes, I forget about that. I forget about it completely until I'm done. And then I go, next time, next route I'll remember. And also, next route I'll remember that there's like the little opening sequence so I can prepare you guys for it and crank the vitamin and no, I'm going to forget every fucking time. <sighs> I'll take the big fat fucking F for all this. I, <laughs> why is anybody here? Like, just, you just enjoy train wrecks. I appreciate it nonetheless. Thank you. Also, if this is the first time you've watched this channel, this does not make me look good at all, like, seriously. Although, you really should have watched the first PLP art before this one, and then I'm not sure if that helps. <laughs> oh, dear God. Uh, I really should have taken the loss on this one and just restart this and pretend that I'm not this dumb and be like, I totally remembered all this shit. Uh, but by this point, skipping the text speed box, it's been so long since you left the comment, done that, that I wouldn't have... You've already realized that I'm an idiot, so... I'm just 
I forget shit very easily if I don't go and do it like, oh, I need to go do that right now. I'm like, I'll remember in three days when I record and then I just forget. And then in the middle of the night, I'm sitting and I'm like, oh, you know, someone left a comment and I got to remember to do that. And then the next day I forget and just here we are. How many months later? Whatever. Let's see if this probably is going to be too fast, but whatever. <sighs> my attempt to stay calm failed miserably. I could hear my voice shaking as I responded. The only reason I did it in the middle of this, too, is because I thought about it. And I'm like, I'll do it after. And I'm like, I'll forget after. And then halfway through the next part, I'll remember. So. Oh, yeah, that's too fast. Okay, that's too fast. That's just automatic, instantaneous. Do that. <laughs> All right. Nicola responded in an instant. There you go. That's perfect. Look at that. Oh, God. It's beautiful. Oh, it's only taken halfway through the game to get to this point. Oh, my God. I'd love nothing more than to return home to you, no matter how busy I am, and to wake up each morning to your voice like this. Oh, Nicola, my voice is nothing that you want to wake up to, but sure. He must still be half asleep, or maybe he was just teasing me. Still, I couldn't help but feel swept away by, su by such sweet words. I tried my best to respond as plainly as possible. I think it's too soon for us to be married. Shut the fuck up, girl! Get out! That's it. She's out. I'm in. Now, let's do this now. I don't think so at all. You're at an age that marriage is acceptable. Well, I suppose so. I did encounter many young wives around town, many not much older than myself. Before the war, many couples were married who were younger than I was now. In any case, it's time to wake up. You're going to be late for work. Just the slight change of his eyebrow there. You're a cruel one, sweet space. His lips formed into a pout as he sulked. I know. I think I'll stay in bed until I hear the answer I want. Oh, Nicola, I'd be like, you're going to be in bed for fucking forever, buddy. Will you be my bride? Yes, fine. I'll be your bride, Nicola. So please, it's time for you to get up now. <laughs> this is not exactly how I expected. Will you marry me? All right, fine, whatever. <laughs> okay. It's a deal. I'm up. I bet you are, but that's not what I'm talking about. You have to get out of bed. I appreciate your cooperation. I w it was a relief to see that he made no further attempts to resist. Neither did we, so fair. Thank goodness. I breathed a sigh, having successfully completed my task for the morning. My task was to get him the fuck out of bed. I mean, there's other ways you could have done it. In the Puglia region of southern... The southern Italy was Berlone, a town that thrived alongside the Mafia. Three major families were in power, known collectively as the Berlone Mafia. Even this is still a little too fast. I love this. But now the town had only two remaining. Two remaining. Did we? What happened in this? I don't remember anything that happened in any route except for so far. What we've learned is Nicola fucking died all the fucking time. Poor fucking Nicola. Um. So it's a toss up. Did the Visconti die off, or did we get rid of Yang? I'm pretty sure we got rid of Yang because, like, he was like the one we didn't like. You know what I mean? And every route, we're like, Yang is evil! Until Yang's right, you're like, he's evil but hot! So, like, what else? I guess I'm into it. <laughs> Fair. Uh, the more prominent was the Falzone family, whose underboss was my love, Nicola Francesca. I headed to the kitchen to prepare an espresso, after which I went to the salon. I like how they're like, one of them is this, the other one, you better fucking remember. I remember nothing. Clearly, I remember nothing from this game, let alone the prior one, so... Nicola arrived shortly afterward, fully dressed. And again, a replay of the first P.O.F. Yard I would have been smart. Oh, there's the front-facing Nicola effect. Quite literally. <sighs> Nicola, I'm going to need you to three-quarter again, okay? Because, like, they kind of made you look like fucking E.T. And it's just unfortunate. Because you're so beautiful. But front-facing Nicola is... <sighs> it's sigh-inducing. It's like, <sighs> really? You know? Anyway. Like some of the CGs. We've had this chat. Good morning. Good morning, Nicola. Oh, Leo, you're still alive. Look at you. 
Like, nobody else has the weird effect front-facing. It's just fucking Nicola for some reason. Here you go, Nicola. I set the espresso cup and saucer down on the table near the sofa where he usually sat. Ah, grazie, space. Seriously, three quarters, buddy. Though I hadn't done anything particularly special, he responded with a happy smile. I mean, it's like, it's weird, because it's like, Nicola's like one of the hottest characters. Like, I just personally. And like, then they're like, then they do this, where you're like, mm, yeah, no, not feeling it. His eyes are just a little too far apart. Too close to the side of his face. There's just something slightly off. It's like that with some CGs where you're like, this is real, that's distract, that one little thing. I don't know what it is, it's really bizarre. It looks like Nicola's in a good mood this morning. Breakfast? There you go! And then you do this, and it's like, look how fucking beautiful this man is. It's perfect. <laughs> Just stay this way. No, this is enough for now. I don't have much time, so I'll have something to eat outside if I'm hungry. I see. Seeing our brief exchange conclude, Dante sat down his cafe, la his cafe latte and spoke. And then this, again, I'm just right in the middle of this man sandwich. Can we just, like, cousin love? Can we just, it's fine. Because I'm pretty sure Nicola was more into Dante than he is in, to me. So that's perfectly fine. I'm okay with this weird incestuous dynamic that's happening secretly under the surface if I'm in the middle of it. It's okay. Like, it's fine. Listen, again, how many games have made me want to date my brother? I'm totally okay if the cousins are getting it on in the background with me in the background. <laughs> we should drink when I play these games. It'd be, like, just as much of a train wreck as it is now. Anyway. Nicola, how did things go last night? Not well, I'm afraid. Uh, the business isn't as stable as they appear. As several of their terms and conditions were different from their prior offer... I don't believe they'll be a reliable partner. I see. Nicola quickly finished the rest of his espresso before standing up from the sofa. I better be off. Space, if you're going back to the church, I can give you a ride. Thank you for the offer, but I'm going to learn one of Julia's recipes today. Is that so? Why does he look so sad? Okay, kind of, okay, front-facing sad face Nicola is not bad, actually. There's some, maybe it's his eyebrows then. Because, like, this is cute. It works. You know? That's baffling. He looked rather disappointed. Nicholas seemed to be more open about his feelings today than usual. He moved closer and whispered into my ear. It's a shame. I don't want to get it. Kind of figured. And with that, Nicola took a step back. I could feel my ears burning from embarrassment. Okay, is this one slightly different, too? Because it doesn't look as bad as the... Like, is it just growing on you where you're like, the more you see it, you're like, the more you get used to it. It's like the shock effect when he's three quarters all the time and then all of a sudden the front facing and you're like, what? No, back it up. And then after a while, you just get used to it and it doesn't seem as odd anymore. Like, what is happening? Is, like, is it just me? Go back a couple frames. And then you're like, it's awkward! And then you're like, oh, well, with the sad eyebrows, it's fine. And then now you're like, this is no different than the prior... What is happening? You know what? I swear to God, I didn't drink today, but I feel like I'm drunk or some shit, because weird shit's happening. Someone dosed my water. I don't know. I can feel my ears burning from embarrassment. I feel my brain sizzling, like, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. N me neither. I couldn't bring myself to say much more. Girl! You've probably had sex with this man a million times, and Lord knows he likes it fucking dirty. Okay? I'm pretty fucking sure we learned that. We saw some of those bad- I still remember that bad ending. That has never left me, Nicola. That was like the hottest bad ending ever, but I'm just throwing it out there, okay? That like, you know this man likes it just fucking dirty as shit, so like, the shit you have done, you have no right to be embarrassed about anything anymore. Except for some of those things when you think back. You're like, that's a little embarrassing, but just don't talk about it. But like, oh, I don't want to be away from you either. You, no, none of this shit. None of this shit. Uh-uh. Not having it. We're not some innocent little flower anymore. We should be like fucking gung-ho whipping out fucking guns and shooting people on this route. I'm just saying. Because you know he's a whore. You know some of the shit we've done is just so, like, e it, would make a, it would make a hooker blush. Like, holy shit, I... But, like, good lord. This man. I'm just saying. 
we are not a good little church girl. We should burst into flames walking through the church with some of the shit I'm sure we've done for Nicola. Okay, I'm just throwing it out there. He stared at me for a moment with a satisfied smile. Don't, Spice! What are you making? We'll be making spaghetti al... Pomodoro? Pomodoro? I'm thinking of baking some... I can't pronounce it. Look, I can't pronounce Italian words! Anyway, whatever. Two. Oh my god. Oh, my... Sorry, my freaking controller just slid out of the thing. Julia's pomodoro sauce tasted much more robust than mine, so she offered to teach me a recipe. I thought it'd be enjoyable with a crispy... I can't. With custard cream filling. I can't. I don't know why. Like, my brain is just, like, not having it. I can't pronounce Italian. Can you just say things like biscotti? I can do that. <laughs> anyway. Is it... Is it pasticciati? Something like that? I, does the C's are, like, is C-H, right? Or is it... Or more like biscotti where it's a hard C. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Dante saying words. Dante, would you help taste it for me? Oh! Say that in front of Nickel. <laughs> oh, and then he's given us that stop at you beautiful bastard. Sure, I'll be looking forward to it. And the dolce you prepare is always delicious. A small smile appeared on Dante's face, and Nicola's eyes sharpened somewhat. <laughs> Just trying to make my future husband jealous and flirting with his cousin. Because he wants to be flirting with his cousin. Oh! This is nice. Look at... That's Nicola's like... I can make you pay for that later. Oh! That's why I do it. <laughs> that's why I flirt with Dante, Nicola. Because I know it. I know you're going to make me pay for it later and I'm into it. <laughs> we should just quit while I'm ahead. Anyway. Dante... Let me remind you that she's mine. Although Nicholas spoke in his usual te teasing manner, Dante took it seriously and responded in earnest. Dante's like, hurt. Anyway, well, of course, I only mean to share my honest opinion. I understand, but... Nicola let out a sigh as he looked at me. I do worry about her sometimes. After all, my Spacey is the cutest. Um... Nicola! Yes? I was thinking of making some just for you. You will try some when you get back, won't you? My darling wife is too adorable for words. Nicola smiled sweetly and placed a loving hand on my cheek. They were like, what now? Everyone's like, huh? He then gave my forehead a tender kiss. Aw, my forehead kisses. You be a good girl while I'm gone, all right? I'm only I'm only a bad girl when I'm with you. I'm a good girl when I'm dating Dante. It's wait, wait, nothing. Here. He gave me a playful wing, pat, uh, put his hat on, and left the salon. When did your wedding ceremony take place? Dante's words snapped me out of my stupor. Dante's like the fuck. <laughs> Look at his face. Y you're mistaken. He's only teasing me. Like that, Nicola. He left me here to deal with this embarrassing situation on my own. Till I felt a small bud of happiness bloom in my heart from Nicola's term of endearment. My cheeks stung as I tried to avoid eye contact with the others. <laughs> Dante's like, um, when did you get married? Leo's like, huh? After my cooking lesson with Julia, I made it back to the church by early afternoon. I followed the echoes of chattering voices to the refectory where Elena was teaching the children reading and writing. Oh, welcome back, Spice. Sis, you're here! Yes, and I brought something back for you all. Really? What is it? Some word I can't pronounce! <laughs> Not even gonna try. I'm gonna butcher it. And anyone who's half Italian, anyone who knows any kind of Italian or is Italian is gonna just be offended, okay? That would be like if I made Italian food. It'd just be offensive. Really? Hooray! Oh, grazie, sis! The children's eyes were sparkling with joy. A fucking train wreck of a part. Well, what a lovely opportunity to take a break. So let's end our studies here for today and have some dolce. All right. <laughs> then I'll go get some drinks from the kitchen. Wait, let me help you. Jean, Laura, can you two have everyone clean up before we eat? Okay. 
children set to work at once with renewed motivation at the thought of food. Ooh, email story, and we absolutely read all of these. Good mood. Was I want it? Yeah. I closed the first deal of the morning and moved on to the next. As we drove to the site, I heard a voice speak up next to me. You're in a good mood today, underboss. You think? You seem to be having more fun than usual. Is that so? I gave a muted reaction as I thought I ha as though I hadn't noticed. As the streets of Falche passed by the window, I thought back on this morning. Oh my god, yes! Flashback to the CG! Okay, listen. I'm not gonna complain when we do, like, a million flashbacks if it comes with fucking CG that we like. I'm just throwing it out there. I asked her to marry me on the spur of the moment. I had planned on asking her for a hand at some opportune time in the near future, but... I was so overwhelmed with happiness when she came to wake me, I couldn't help myself. I was ultimately carried away by my feelings. I could tell she was surprised, but she took it more lightly than I had intended it. It was a mistake asking her so early in the morning. She must not have taken me seriously. Well, my timing could have been better. I still felt so pleased that a smile could easily betray my feelings if I wasn't careful. That's, like, fucking adorable, though. He's like, I don't think she took me serious, but he's thinking about it. Nobody else has asked me to marry them. What the fuck? I'm pretty sure Yang is like, I don't need to marry you. You're just my property now. Whatevs. And you're like, okay. And Orlok will never ask you because you've got to all grow up soon. You know, that's like your, like, fucking tween love over there because he's, like, a baby. So, like, you know, you got, you got a long time before that happens. All right. But, like, Gil. Hello, Gil. Gil asks to marry. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. When we went to America, maybe was he like, whatever did that happen? I can't remember Gil's route. Somebody will tell me, and then I'll forget. By the time this goes up, now nah, I probably won't even be finished recording this route by the time this goes up. That's how fucking like slippery of a slope we're on. Uh, anyway, the children set to work at once with. Re oh, you already read that. Okay. The word I can't pronounce had just come out of the oven before I left, so they were still freshly baked. I hurried with Elena to the kitchen so that we could enjoy them while they were still warm. Stop fucking saying, like, whatever. I filled the kettle with water and set it down on the stove to boil. We still had some grounded barley to mix in to make Café de Orzo for the children. Café de Orzo? Okay. Something like that, I guess. Oh, you see, Spies? Yes? Do you think it'd be better to put it all on a large plate or prepare one plate for each? As Elena pulled one of the plates from the shelf, it suddenly fell from her hands. I quickly reached out and managed to stop it from crashing on the floor. Ninja skills. I I'm so sorry. Thank you. Don't worry. I'm glad I caught it. I smiled and placed the plate on the table, then turned to take a closer look at Elena. Elena, are you all right? It wasn't too long ago that Elena was stabbed by someone from the Lao Shu. Poor fucking Elena. I was like, at least she's okay in this route, not like fucking traumatized by Lee and Yang's route. And then we're like, oh, I'm dating that guy who was the boss of the guy that like assaulted you and shit. And she's like, no, it's fine. Like, like, I feel like Elena might be like an MVP. Like, maybe not the MVP, but very close. Because she's like over here like, you know. Sister Sophia might be the MVP, because that bitch got punched by fucking Orlock. You, like, punched a nun. Just, like, what the hell? What the hell? Uh, she was treated in the hospital and later discharged, but she hadn't quite been the same ever since. Well, listen, Elena. Suck it up, Buttercup, because it could be worse. Want to meet my other boyfriend in the other timeline? <laughs> His underboss, like, assaults you and does horrible shit and gets you hooked on drugs. Stabbing is nothing. I'm worried about her. Yes, my wound's practically healed. And the plate just slipped out of my hands for some reason. Well, if you say so. Elena's response was as bright as usual. I pulled down some cups for the Café de Orzo and a certain memory returned to mind. It was the night I saw someone being killed right in front of me. Nicola came to my rescue and took me into the Falzone family's protection. Back then, I never expected that I'd someday be in love with Nicola. I did, I'm sure. Because it was probably his route. But also, like, 
Nicholas just hot, so always knew I was going to be in love with him. I'm easy. Okay. I might fall in love with other characters that I'm not instantly drawn to, but I always love the ones I'm instantly drawn to, even if they're trash. It's like, I know they suck and they're awful and this route is terrible, but I still love the way they look and they're pretty, so it doesn't matter. That says a lot. <laughs> look, my Atome tastes are pretty fucking shallow. Anyway. I reflected absentmindedly on the thought as Elena and I continued making our preparations. Soon afterward, we spent the afternoon eating with the kids and having a lovely time. With the arrival of the morning, sunlight streamed in through the window, accompanied by the sound of birds chirping. Hmm. I slowly awoke as usual, sitting up on the bed. Another beautiful day. I was eager to get ready for the morning ahead. As I got dressed, I was naturally reminded of Nicola. He had given me these beautiful clothes and accessories as gifts. Each piece was a treasure to me. Nicola must still be sleeping. I wonder if he worked late again. It had already been a few days since the night I spent at the Falzone Manor. I could tell my time with Nicola had declined since the beginning of the year. Face. Sister Sophia spoke my name as everyone finished breakfast. Okay, it's still like it's actually going almost too fast. I guess, holy shit, I can't believe that I'm actually like saying that it's like going too fast now. It's like it's slightly too fast. But it was like way too I don't think we're going to find a happy medium here. That might be too slow. We'll see. Do you mind if I ask you to buy something? Not at all. What do you need? Some fabric, if you can. I'd like to start teaching Laura and the others to sew. It could be a little bit faster, but if you go up four, then, like, it's, like, almost jarring. Like, I noticed it in the last couple where it's a very short line. It's like, bing, 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 and it's like, okay, simmer down. But this might be a little, it's like there's no happy medium. There's not the right perfect thing for me. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. Uh. We taught the children at the church various skills so that they could live on their own in the future. Yeah, okay, that's too slow. All right, we just got... <laughs> ah! What the actual hell? Yes, all right, fine. That... It's just on short ones, it's too fast. It like, dink, and you're like, okay, it's jarring to me. Like, there's just something about it flipping in my... Like... Anyway. We taught the children at the church various skills so they could live on their own in the future. Reading and writing, of course, but also cooking and sewing when the girls were old enough. Yeah, I guess this is fine. I'll go with you. Carrying fabric can be pretty heavy alone, you know? Really? Thank you, Elena. Not only was I grateful for her offer to help, but also the opportunity to spend some more time with her. Do you see the difference, though? The other one was like, like, there needs to be an in-between. I want half between that one. A little bit slower than this, but still faster than the other one. Like... <laughs> such an asshole. I'm not going to be happy with the way they do their tech speed. Thank you for helping, both of you. Sure. We answered in unison, just as we did when we were kids, then got ready to go out at once. But you see what I'm saying? Like, this is a little fast, but the other one's a little too slow. It's like, what the fuck? Do you... Uh, I just... I'm not crazy, am I? I mean, yes, I'm crazy, but, like, you see it, don't you? Like... Elaine and I walked over to a familiar fabric store where we usually shopped. Since we're here, we may as well choose a cute pattern for them. Say, Elena, how about this one? Oh, how pretty! I'm sure the kids will love it. All right, then we can get this one and that. As we compared the fabrics, we chatted about a number of different things. Let's see, is there any more white fabric aside from these? Oh, uh, let me get some from the back. While the owner went to the back of the store, Elena and I arranged together the bolts we planned to buy. Suddenly, I overheard some customers nearby talking about an article in the newspaper. Nicola found dead. I'm just kidding. Huh, so there's a new governor. The old one was around for a while, so who's the next guy? Some guy named Ernesto DeFeo. Oh, good, we get to learn more about Roberto's uncle, father, brother, whoever. Somehow related to him kind of forgot about that in Yang's route, and I'm not 100% sure it came up in, like, it might have come up in Orlog's route, but it's like, they kind of throw this at you, and then it's like, never seen or heard from again. 
And if the Lao Shu's gone, then we're not going to get What's-His-Face. <laughs> so, like, that's sad. Like, I can't remember his name right now. But anyway, he's he's not going to be in this one. So, interesting. <gasps> but if Gil's still alive, we might get to see his dad again. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Eugene. Uh, huh. New governor of Puglia. I could tell things were beginning to change, especially with the news of the church's new pope. A store and a return from the back. Sorry for the wait. This is the only white one I have left. Grazie, signor. Setting it down beside the others, Elena and I began calculating how many yards we would be able to buy. All of it! Nicola fucking busts him. Psh. Buy it all! Throws money. That's why I like rich boyfriends. I want a rich boyfriend. Not cute enough to have a rich boyfriend. I'm so glad we were able to get these. He was so nice of him to discount them for us. Yes, what a relief. Elaine and I walked through Arca, carrying the stacks of newly cut fabric we purchased for the children. Amidst the crowd of people, I noticed a familiar face. Well, Orlok's not dead, so... Uh, Orlok! Orlok met my eyes and gave a slight bow. Bonjour, note, senor. Are you in your way to the church? No, not today. I could tell how nervous Elena was by her greeting and her suddenly straightened back. Nervous? Or is she into Orlock? I could hook them up. That's fine. Actually, you know what? You two should be happy together. Then I don't feel bad about not bringing Orlock into the man harem. He's a good character, but not like, look, you can guard the man harem if you want. But like, it's a man harem, not like adorable puppy harem. You know what I mean? Um... But, like, Elena is adorable, and, like, she's like a little church girl. She's a good church girl. I am absolutely not. I'm a filthy, filthy whore, okay? So, like, no. But, like, you two should hook it up. That's cool. I like that. Let's set them up. How about that? I don't want to set up Elena with Roberto, okay? Because, like, he's a little bit of a psycho. Oh, wasn't he especially in this one? Isn't this the one where he got a little rapey because he hates Nicholas so much? Yeah, okay. You know, listen. We know that I like my trash, but that there was just like something I was like, no. Nah! I mean, I don't think I'd hate if they had given him like a like a side character route, like they did in Beard of Shauna, where they had like if stories with like the side characters. Oliver is still my number fucking one. I love that motherfucker so goddamn much. But like, I don't think I'd be opposed to doing like an if side story with fucking Roberto. You know what I mean? Because like, it seemed kind of cool in the beginning. It was when we got into this, and you're like, what the fuck? Like. That is a line, but at the same time, like, so it was kind of like a off switch for me, which is weird because, like, love interests have done so much fucking worse, right? You know what I mean? But at the same time, you're like, okay, well, wait. I mean, you hated Nicholas so much, and then all that crazy, and, I mean, uh, uh, you know. So I get it. Yeah. I don't hate Roberto. I don't love him. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have a route with him. I'm not sad about it. I'm sad about not having one with Oliver. But if they gave us, like, the side character kind of little side story things, I'd be down for it. And I think they should. More games should do what Birushana did and fucking give you, like, little short, lovey, fluffy endings with the side characters. Just because. Because, I mean, listen. They know what we want. They're like, you're going to love these side characters and you can't. We'll give you them. Don't worry. We like you. So I'm just saying. More of that, please. I think we can all agree. Yes. More getting to bang our side characters. He was the one who had saved us and took Elena to the hospital after she was attacked. Thank you for telling me that game, because I didn't remember. He had undoubtedly saved our life. <gasps> it's like a fucking meat cute. He saved our life. That's adorable. Oh, let's get married. You too. I saw his eyes fall upon the folded fabric in our arms. Orlok, is there something... Um, that was... Let me help you. Huh? Oh, um, oh, we're fine, really. But they look heavy. I can help. Oh my god. He's gonna touch them. Their arms and then their eyes. <gasps> I know I'm supposed to be concerned about my romance here, but like, whatever, it's fine. Uh, I'm concerned about their romance and I'm here for it. Orlok easily lifted the stacks of fabric from both of us. Huh? <gasps> You were so strong. He seemed to extend no effort at all in carrying them as he walked toward the church. 
Look, her cheeks are blushy. Is she blushy? I can't tell. We'll just pretend. Elena and I looked at each other in amazement. We finally snapped back to our senses. Th Thank you, Warlock! <laughs> Casino! You know what that means! Unless he's dead in this route. Come on. Come on. Ah! Yes! Thank you! I love my Phantom of the Casino so much. Listen, I know we get to date him at the very end of the game because Henry's route the last, but still. Still! Never gonna forget the fact that it's like, he. we better be able to date this motherfucker because he's on the cover of the fucking game. And then they get you through the whole thing and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I actually get to date the Phantom of the Casino. I love it so much. I hate it when they give you a character and you're like, I love this one. They're my favorite. And they're like, you can't have him. Too many games are doing that to me lately. Okay? Too many games where you're like, that character, you can't date him. Excuse me? You give me the weird masquerade circus looking character and you're telling me I can't date them? Again, I hate clowns. and I'm, But for some reason, this whole fucking masquerade ball fucking jester circus fucking vibe thingies that they all have kind of going on. There's like a weird, you know what I'm saying? You know the characters I'm talking about if you've watched any other games or whatever. And you're like, yeah, yeah okay, you can pinpoint them. Those characters, I don't know why I like them so much, but like, then I never can date them and it's fucking annoying. They gave me my Phantom of the Casino. Anyway, it's not the point. Welcome and thank you for visiting our humble establishment, Senor Francesca. Allow me to show you to the conference room. The Senor Redford is waiting for you there. Okay, so Yang's the one who's dead in this one. Okay. Oh? Gilbert's actually early today. Yes, and perhaps he has a wealth of time to spare. I must admit, this reminds me of the old days. Signor Francesca, although you've left the Visconti and returned to your old home, I'm pleased to see that you are still in charge of negotiations with the Visconti. Diratore, I'm surprised that you've been dwelling on such old memories. I'd expect something more in line with current events. Ah, my apologies. Do forgive me. Fucking love these. Hey, Nicola. You're looking well as always, Gilbert. And Gilbert wasn't, like, one that I was, like, in love with from the very beginning, even though he's handsome. But it's, like, he does win you fucking over. He really does. You get into his route and you're like, I do love you. Stop it. <laughs> After exchanging some pleasantries, I... T oh, that's not me. I'm Nicola. Whatever. After exchanging some pleasantries, I took a seat to get right to business. I assume you called me here about the wharf? Bingo. We got a huge deal there next week. I'd like to ask for some extra security around the place. The Falzone and Visconti families had formed a pact to eliminate our common enemy, the Lao Shu. And since then, we continued to coexist in Berlin, conducting our affairs without any issue. A huge deal, you say? Chicago, perhaps? Yeah. Really? You admitted that so easily. There's no use in playing dumb. Could have figured it out if you wanted to, right? I won't deny it. And Gilbert's willingness to disclose important information was a testament to his confidence. It seemed he hardly ever gave a second thought to worrying about things most others would. And then again, I was certain his carefree attitude gave his lawyer ulcers of the acutest kind. In that sense, I couldn't help but feel sorry for his men. <laughs> I'm really glad they brought up Oliver into it. <laughs> Oliver is literally in the corner like, Oh, Gilbert, what the fuck? I didn't bring him, but I know he's at home and he's like feels it like a gut punch. Probably already heard through the grapevine that we're planning on getting out of here. Not like it's a well-kept secret, anyhow. I offer my hearty support. Your move benefits the Falzone family as well. Well, there's still a lot of moving pieces. And Gilbert chuckled and shrugged. And despite his usual smile, I could tell he was feeling conflicted about the whole situation. I heard that customs there has been much stricter than they've been in the past. Yeah, they're literally confiscating things left and right, whether contraband or not. I'd love to set up shop there as soon as possible, but... Well, I've definitely got my work cut out for me. Aw, Gilbert's still gonna leave us. It's okay, when he comes to the man harem, he's not gonna leave us. It'll be alright. It's fine, but anyway. Th thank you, Warlock! Wait, right, that, but it's fine. We hurriedly chased after him. Warlock turned around at the sound of our approaching footsteps and seemed to smile. Ding. We arrived at the church with Orlock, who looked not the least bit fatigued. Elena and I took the fabrics from him, and as 
and as she headed back, I offered him my thanks again. Thank you, Orlock. You're a lifesaver. Literally. Oh, if you'll excuse me. He gave another slight bow and turned to depart. Uh, um, wait! I instinctively stopped him from leaving. There was a question I wanted to ask him. Have you been meeting with Nicola often lately? Orlock seemed slightly troubled by my question and was unable to hide it. What should I say? Nicola seems busy, Nico busy lately. You're Nicola's friend. Um. Well, I mean, he seems busy lately, but I feel like maybe the friend thing? Like, you're his friend, right? You know things. Like, appeal to, like, the softy in Orlock. Um. Yours. I just thought you might have seen Nicola recently because you're his friend. Friend? And Orlock's like, what's a friend? Yes, when Nicola introduced you to me, he said you were his friend. That was just his way of hiding my identity as an informant, but he does give me work from time to time. I see. I thought that Orlock might know why Nicola had been so busy lately. But I'm sure it would trouble him if I asked him more about it. Um, thank you again for your help, Orlock. It was very thoughtful of you. Sure. He appeared a bit bewildered at my fangs, but nodded in acknowledgement. Well, I should be going. Just as he did before, he bowed again and took his leave. Time for dinner, everyone! Yay! Dinner, dinner! Jean, Giovanni, do you remember what we should do when we have mud on our shoes? Ah, oh, shucks! All right! As I led the children inside, I happened to glance over at the church. Gil? Gil noticed me and beamed, waving at me from afar. You know what I love about this is I know we're dating Nicola, but like all of our boyfriends are, except for Yang, we killed poor fucking Yang, but that's okay, whatever. Um, but like, you know, and it's like, no, oh, it's like being, it's like we live in the man harem, but the man harem is a city. And I'm staying at a church. I wouldn't really do that, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just like we get to keep all of our boyfriends. Where the fuck is Oliver? I mean, unfortunately, again, Yang is dead in this route, and that's just disappointing, but it's okay. Like, <laughs> Nicola is alive so far, one out of the four routes we've played. Three routes he's been, three quarters of the time he's been dead. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, <laughs> I smiled and gave a nod in response. Come to think of it, it's Friday. He's here for his usual visit. This! Hurry! Yes, coming! I quickly followed after the children. Hi, Tiny Bird! Tiny Bird chirped. Right? Last year, I, I stayed a while at the Visconti Manor under, uh, Manor under Gil's care. Whatever, I'm going to read the meanwhile story, and then we'll come back and read this line properly. Governor, I'm assuming we read it. Yes. I feel like in the good route, you read everything. Look at this swanky-ass fucking office. Congratulations on your new suit as governor, senor. I'm sure this will mark the grand start of a new government. Ah, oh, of course I believe you. <laughs> Indeed, I cannot wait. I don't know who it is, but... The new governor of Puglia, Ernesto, Ernesto de Feo. An advocate of the fascist movement. One who desired the decimation of the mafia. I decided to get in contact with him after learning that he was interested in the Fell's own family. To think the day would come that he'd be governor. He's exceeded my expectations. This will be quite interesting. I don't know who it is, so I figure we might as well just have some fun with it. Last year, I stayed a while at the Visconti Manor under Gil's care. See? That being said, he was still a mafia boss. I tried to keep an appropriate distance after leaving his place. He's still a mafia boss? You're basically married into the mafia at this point. You know that, right? Like, she she can do math, right? I stirred awake, sitting up to check the time. It's earlier than usual. Today was the day I'd see Nicola. I would be waking up like it's 12.01! See you, Nicola! I felt a nervous flutter at the thought that we would be spending time together soon. <laughs> I arrived at the Falzone family manor. There was a car out front which seemed to be waiting for someone to come outside. It can't be... peeked into the salon and saw the very person I'd been looking forward to seeing. 
they're just gonna give us front face and Nicola every single time, isn't it? Like, there's just something about it. Disjoint, it's disorienting. You're just like, mm -mm. it's like that's what they're gonna do the whole game. Stop it! Ah, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you're here. Uh, but I'm sorry. I have some sudden urgent business, so I'm afraid I must be going. I may not be back until late tonight. See, well then, be careful, Nicola. I'm really sorry. Let's reschedule. Yes? Nicola kissed me on the forehead before heading outside. I could only watch as he departed the manor. I was left to think alone in the silence of the salon. What should I do now? Cry. I had asked for a day off from my duties at the church. I wondered to myself how I could make the most of the day now that it was wide open. Flops down on couch, takes on nap. What was Julia's voice? Oh, I don't remember. Anyway, Space, you're here. I didn't know. Bonjour, no, Julia. Nicola and I had plans today. Oh, my. But young Nicola is just... Yes, I saw him on his way out. He said he had something urgent to attend to. I see. Well, how about you come with me to the kitchen? Would you like to bake something together? May I? Yes, of course, dear. Let's bake something for young Nicola. He can eat it tomorrow when he returns. Thank you, Julia. Spending time with Julia, this seems fun. I happily accepted her invitation. I mean, it's Julia. We love Julia, so of course we're going to spend time in the kitchen with her. We walked together to the kitchen, and I put on one of the aprons hanging from the rack. Say, Julia? Yes? Nicola's been very busy lately, hasn't he? And Dante as well. And they have indeed. So many things have been changing around us, it seems. I sipped at some flour into a bowl, watching as it fell lightly like snowfall. I wonder if there's any way I can help. Oh? Julia looked up at me from the butter on the counter. You really shouldn't worry about that. Has young Nicola been saying such things to you? No, nothing like that. She sliced some butter and put it into a bowl. I'm sure he's more than happy with just your presence here. I sure hope so, but... I understand you're worried about him. I get worked up myself seeing Bartolo running all over the place when he's busy. You too, Julia? Yes, so much that I wanted to help him too. But Bartolo knows his work so well that it's often something only he can do. Bartolo was Julia's husband. He was the head butler of the Francesca family manor, overseeing all the day-to-day -day duties. I wasn't sure exactly what that entailed, but I could imagine how stressful it must be. How troubling. Yes, truly. We will always be worried. We shared a laugh as we continued. The sun was already setting by the time I left the Falzone Manor. I brought back with me a basket of flower-shaped biscotti. Biscotti canis... Not canistrelli, it's... Is it? Is it can... Yeah, because you actually say the L's like L's in Italian. Anyway, close enough. Well, my early return to the church came as a surprise. Seeing the basket full of treats was enough to divert everyone's attention. They're like, where are you supposed to spend the night? Later that night, I was just about ready to go to bed when... Come in! Nicola? I was like, huh? <laughs> no. And there's a call from you. It's from Signor Francesca. I'll be right there! I threw on a robe and rushed to the refectory. Hello? Nicola? Yes, dis dear Signora, Signorina, whatever, can't pronounce the words today. My heart leapt with joy at the sound of his voice so close to my ear. I am still in the middle of a dinner meeting, but since everything's mostly settled, let's not go away for a moment to use the phone. We should be wrapping up after wrapping up after our drinks, and so I'm just about done for the day. Nicola, knowing that he couldn't wait to call me, filled me with joy. I'm so sorry about today. It's all right. I know it's because of work. I'm just glad you're almost done for the night. Really happy you were able to give me a call. I hope you'll allow me to make it up to you. And do you have some time this weekend? Yes, absolutely. How about Saturday? I'll come pick you up from the church. I'll clear my schedule so we can spend some time together at the Francesca Manor. I'd be so grateful if you would. Seems I haven't had enough of you these days. Woo! 
<laughs> Steamy. At Nicola's request, I responded, Fuck yeah! I feel the same way! Girl, if you say dot dot dot, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Which, I'm mean, gonna have to be me. Hell yeah! Woohoo! I, I feel the same way. I want to see you again as soon as possible. Maybe because he wasn't here in front of me, it felt easier for me to express my honest feelings. I could hear him sigh on the other end. If only it were already Friday evening. I'd run over there myself to hug you. Nicola. Just then I heard someone call for Nicola on the other end of the receiver. Sorry, I need to get going. Of course, I'm just happy I was able to hear your voice. Me too. So, Saturday at the usual time. Looking forward to seeing you. My heart was still racing as I hung up. I hope Saturday comes soon. The thought of waiting felt unbearable. Back in my room, I turned off the light and climbed into bed. I couldn't wait to see Nicola, but at the same time, another thought occurred. I feel like this is happening more often. It wasn't the first time we needed to reschedule due to last-minute work. But this year, it seemed to happen more frequently than before. I often see Dante and Nicola having serious discussions when I come over. Most of the time, they would wrap up if they saw me walk into the salon. But there was one time they didn't. Flashback. Conflicts with the police. Yes, especially after Marco passed away. Even though the fault was theirs. Oh no, Marco died in this one? Oh, I didn't remember that. Oh no, that's sad. Poor Marco. It's also true that a foul zone killed their detective, no doubt leading to our current situation. Making matters worse, the government's in favor of suppressing the Mafia. Thanks to that, it's caused some distance between us and those in the political sphere we once knew. With all these factors seemingly working against the Falzone, the number of deals we've handled has been on the decline. No. You both seem so busy recently that I thought you had even more work than before. And that's actually part of the problem. We've been brokering more deals for new clients. Old clients of the Lao Shoes. However, there are certain standards that all our clients must meet. So the extra work you've been handling is... needing to check on everyone's backgrounds before you can even accept the orders? That's correct. And negotiations take time, as does investigation behind the scenes. On top of that, many have been one-off deals. After the time it takes to establish a partnership, the work just runs dry. It's certainly a headache. The steady work is declining and the new business is unreliable. The family's profits continue to decrease. That's gotta suck. Gonna be broke like the rest of us. Look, when you were already broke and you just get broker, it sucks. But when you're super fucking rich and then you get broke, that's gotta that's gotta suck worse. I'm just saying. The rest of us were like, oh, I was kind of already in the shithole, so uh, <laughs> I was kind of already like searching the couch cushions for like loose change, but I'm kind of used to it. But like you, you're like, wait, 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 money used to just fall out of my pockets. I know, and I used to search your couch cushions for loose change, and now you got it, and so I'm like... <laughs> ah, no need to worry, Signorina. Oh, we're doing well enough. We've been working around the clock to make up for any losses. Pressure from the government will only go stronger, but the foul zone won't be taken down so easily. He spoke with the bold conviction expected of the boss of the Falzone family. It's so funny because you're here and they're like talking like, you know, government is just rude to the mafia. And you're like, yeah, wait a minute. You're like the bad guys, though. <laughs> when they're framing this, and you're like, but they're so wholesome for bad guys. I, It's very confusing. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, you're like, uh, all this thing, you're like, oh, I feel so bad for them. Everything's gotten so hard and that's not fair. Wait a minute. You're the mafia <laughs> supposed to side with them, and yet we totally are, right? Like, it's a very weird place. Not that I don't believe in Nicola and Dante, but the whole situation was very concerning. If they weren't giving themselves enough time to rest, that could put their health at risk. Thought lingered unsettlingly in my mind. We're going to fall asleep. And we're going to end this part right here. So, anyway. Yep, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up 
and subscribe to see more. Thank you.